Cape Nosap, the place to see the earliest sunrise in mainland Japan. As they watched the ocean bathed in the reddish glow of the morning sun, the forerunners who came to this land knew that to live here is to live with the sea. Kayodai, a place with a panoramic view of the Konsen Plateau in eastern Hokkaido. The vast lands you can see from this hill were settled by pioneers who had to face many difficult struggles. This is a story of the people whose lives have been shaken by the tides of history, but through grit and determination, they have rooted themselves in this land and its sea. Fishing vessels in Hokkaido leave port before the sunrise. The fishing industry in Nemuro began several hundred years ago. The people in this area have long prospered from its rich marine resources. In ancient times, salmon was the main source of sustenance. Every year in autumn, the inhabitants would catch the salmon swimming upstream. Not only did they consume it as food, they also traded it to neighboring lands. Such was the value of salmon in the region. For over 10,000 years, from prehistoric times to the age of Ainu culture and even to this day, salmon has been a major part of life in the Nemuro region. This place has even been called a sacred land of salmon and its salmon culture was designated a Japan heritage in June 2020. The waters around the four islands of the Northern Territories are rich fishing grounds. It has long been regarded as one of the world's three largest fishing areas. The cold Chishima Current and the warm Japan Current converge in this area, creating an abundance of fish species in the continental shelves between Hokkaido and the small islands. Indeed, the area is blessed with marine resources such as salmon, Pacific sauri, cod, crab, shrimp, and kombu kelp. This abundance of marine resources led to the rise of various industries. Many businessmen moved to Nemuro to engage in seafood processing. When the industrialist Katsusaburo Usui came to Nemuro in 1875, he took particular interest in crab, now a famous local specialty of Nemuro. Back then, crab was considered to be a nuisance to fishing and was often thrown away. But Usui was able to profit from it by canning it and selling it to the Japanese Navy and exporting it overseas. This was the first canned crab meat product in Japan. Besides canned food, the resourceful Usui also engaged in sake brewing and livestock farming. The sake he started producing over 130 years ago is now known as Kitano Katsu, one of the popular brands of Hokkaido sake. It was the richness of the sea that gave birth to these industries and attracted many people to work in the region. By the early 1900s, over 5,000 seasonal laborers from Hokkaido and the main island had been coming to Nemuro every year seeking to make a living from the bountiful sea. Japanese fishing vessels also started to expand their fishing range to include the waters off the Chishima Islands and the Kamchatka Peninsula. In contrast, development of the region's inland areas was slower to progress. In particular, the Tondenhe military settlers had to face much hardship. In the Tondenhe system, established in 1874, former samurai were recruited by the government and sent to Hokkaido to defend and develop the island. They performed both farm work and military training and were also mobilized in times of war. By 1886, the Wada Tondenhe, who settled in Nemuro, had built a farming village of about 440 families. However, many of them were unused to farming, and with the soil being unsuitable for growing crops, 
coupled with the frequent occurrence of sea fog and strong winds, cultivation work did not go well. As a result, many of the Tondenhe left Nemuro with their families at the end of their service terms. They were unaware at the time that the soil and climate of the region was actually more suitable for dairy farming. The 1920s was a dawning period for dairy farming in Hokkaido. At the time, many families in Nemuro raised around 10 dairy cattle while also doing crop farming. The cool climate made it difficult to grow crops properly, especially during years of cold summers. But this same climate would lead to the development of the dairy industry. A turning point came in 1933 when the Hokkaido government rolled out the five-year farming development plan for the Konsen Plain, which prompted a major shift to dairy farming in the region. After various region-wide efforts, the dairy industry began to show some level of growth. It was at this point that large dairy corporations from Tokyo entered the fray. These companies competed with a local firm for the supply of raw milk causing the price of milk to steadily go up. The farmers who persevered through tough times as the industry tried to find its footing were finally being rewarded. The industries in the region experienced significant changes after the Second World War. In particular, the fishing industry became faced with a more difficult environment. The occupation of the Northern Territories by the Soviet Union meant that Japanese vessels could not readily fish in the resource-rich waters around the four islands. After Japan's formal surrender, it lost all fishing rights to the North Pacific. Though fishing resumed in 1952, operations were limited to the high seas around the Aleutian Islands, and the yields decreased significantly. Salmon fishing around the Chishima Islands also resumed, but in 1956, the Soviet Union established a fishery regulation zone and set limits to Japan's annual catch. Many fishing vessels were seized and made to pay heavy fines after being caught in the restricted areas. The dark days for the fishing industry dragged on. In the 1970s, Many countries established exclusive fishery zones, which extend 200 nautical miles from their shores. Already limited in their activities around the Chishima Islands, this development proved to be another blow to Nemuro fishermen, who had been freely fishing in the high seas around the world on the back of advanced fishing techniques and cheap labor costs. After its defeat in the Second World War, Japan experienced a severe food shortage and even had to receive food assistance from the United States. In order to accelerate the agricultural development of Hokkaido to produce more food, the Japanese government borrowed heavily from the World Bank. When World Bank project observers visited Hokkaido, they were particularly impressed with the developments in the Konsen Plateau. The region's cool climate and relatively little snowfall made it suitable for pasture-based dairy farming. In 1955, the region's dairy industry took a big step forward through a project known as the Konsen Pilot Farm. Financed through loans from the World Bank, the project involved large-scale reclamation of land for dairy farms using modern machinery. It also included infrastructure development and farmer training. In addition to the reclaimed land, settlers to the farms were given brick silos and 10 dairy cattle. By 1964, a total of 361 families had settled in the farms, and the number of dairy cattle had increased to the several thousands. Despite these achievements, the pilot farm project was not without its shortcomings. There were more than a few settlers who struggled to repay their debts and decided to abandon their farms altogether. Other farmers were more successful, but the lack of farmland meant that some had to borrow land from faraway areas in order to expand. 
the Pilot Farm project eventually became a model for dairy farming in Hokkaido. But it was criticized for being detached from the reality on the ground and it had several flaws that led to many farmers quitting halfway. Still, there were others who were able to establish farms that continue to operate to this day. In 1973, as a replacement for the pilot farm project, the government launched the New Dairy Village Construction Project. The initial number of dairy cattle was 70 per farm, and the farmland provided was three times the size of that in the pilot farm. This project aimed to create larger scale dairy farms similar to those in Western countries by utilizing open ranges, large barns and steel silos, pipeline milkers, and bulk milk coolers. This approach became the norm in the Konsen Plateau until the 1990s, and it helped establish the region as a kingdom of dairy. From the 1990s, the number of dairy farms started to decline in some areas due to farmer aging and lack of successors. Fearing a crisis, many agricultural cooperatives in the region began efforts to attract new farmers. In Bekkai town, the government and local cooperatives established the Bekkai Dairy Training Farm in 1999. People who trained there for a certain period were able to receive a plot of farmland to start a dairy farm. Such was the case for the Hosokawa family, who established a new dairy farm in an abandoned plot of land that was first developed during the Konsen pilot farm. こうしたらいいよ、明日たらいいよっていう話はちょくちょくうちにまでわざわざ来て話をしてくれるっていうのが大変助かってる。人が温かいというか、初めてポンって来た私もすごい優しく受け入れてくださって、なので恩返しし
の稚魚を放流して帰ってくるのはそのうちの今でいうと200万尾ぐらいになってますね昔からこの標津町標津川はじめ標津町についてはまあ鮭一色でずっとやってきたんでまあ漁業者さんも昔取れてた時代があったゆえに今は取れなくなったということでまあかなり危機感を持っててあの昔のように資源増,や増えれば一番いいんでしょうけど少ないながらもまあ持続していく必要があるのかなとは思ってますけどね。The region's conservation efforts are not limited to salmon. Some of the aquacultures thriving in the region include sea urchin, shrimp, crab, octopus, scallops, and kombu kelp. Another industry initiative that began from the fishermen themselves is the establishment of the region's seafood as a brand. Situated in the Shiretoko Peninsula, the Daos fisheries. Cooperative Association markets its highest quality autumn salmon as a unique brand that features traceability. まあブランド化を進めていくと、そういういろんな部分でこの地域のネームバリューが上がっていく。町としてのブランドですよね。だからそれに向けてこの町の主幹産業が漁業であるんであれば、その漁業で上がったものがブランド化されたものは。やっぱりどこかで取り上げられるメディアでもいいですし、まあ、ネットの中で、えっと、火がつくのでもいいんですけれども羅臼町自体が盛り上がれるようなその原動力として、えー、漁業があるようになっていくことが望ましいと思います。はい、The dairy industry has its own innovations. The Nemuro region accounts for around 20% of all the dairy cattle and milk production volume in Hokkaido, making it one of the most prominent dairy farming regions in the island. Let's take a look at the case of Nakashibetsu town. This farm makes use of the latest dairy technology, including milking robots and computer controlled barn temperature management. By shifting from manual to mechanized operations, They were able to cut down on labor and boost efficiency. For the cattle feed, local farmers established a joint company that conducts pasture management and silage production and storage in an integrated manner, delivering feed to local farms on a set daily schedule. The farm is very good. 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 あと牛の方はそれこそ本当にストレスが少なくたとえ絞り残ったとしても何回でも入れるんでそれで乳房炎も少なくなって、ね、いいことが多いで、はい、少ない人数でも頭数を回せるようにっていうことでやり始めたんですけどでも今は結構そのロボットを使ってさらに。規模を拡大して従業員も雇いつつロボットも使ってさらなる相乗効果によって規模を大きくしてるっていうところが結構出てきている。Although it took some time for the dairy industry to flourish in the Nemuro region, through the groundwork laid by their forerunners and the continuing efforts of many industry players, the region has established itself as one of the largest dairy kingdoms in Japan. Blessed with rich oceans and vast lands with a cool climate, the fishing and dairy industries of Nemuro have developed through many ups and downs. They are continuously working to find how best to utilize, protect, and develop the region's resources. They are able to shine in their efforts because they learned to never give up and keep moving forward despite facing adversity.